Hi everyone, Daniel from Homegrown Australia. So in the outer eastern suburbs of Melbourne, we've got our cherry trees. Um, and this is my final cherry tree video. So in the other two videos, we looked at the star crimson cherry tree as I was picking it. Uh, in the second video, we looked at the Stella cherry tree. And this one before us now is the Lappin's cherry tree. And I thought it was worth just sharing my experiences with each of these trees um, to give people a bit of an idea of, you know, um, what goes on with the different trees and maybe help you make a decision um, if you're only buying one or two trees. So, in the first video we talked about how the, the rain really affected the Star Crimson this year. Last year I got about six kilos of cherries off it, this year I only got about three kilos of cherries off it. And um, it, it's been by far the most prolific um, tree. But having a thin skin, it seems to be much more susceptible um, to rot and mould and, and the skin splitting um, if we get an abundance of rain all coming down at the same time. So um, then we moved on to the, um, the Stella cherry tree and it's got a thicker skin and the cherries were beautiful and plump. Um, and we got about three kilos of, um, maybe just slightly over three kilos of cherries off that tree. Now these trees have been kept well pruned um, so I can reach them. I haven't had to climb a ladder on, on this Lappin's tree at all. And I only had to pick um, a few cherries at the very top with the ladder on the, on the Stella. So um, I'm really just picking these from the ground, uh, keeping them nice and small. Um, so what have I observed on the, on the Lappin's tree? Well, I'm right at the final stages of picking this tree and you'll see down on the ground, I've got a bowl and it's about 3.6 kilos worth of cherries. I've just weighed those. Um, just got a few more here to go on, on the branches. And you'll notice on the ground, um, I've got a few cherries that I've thrown down there that have been um, either picked up by the birds or a bit undersized. Um, so a few more, but also I'm just gonna walk around the tree. Um, you'll see on the side where um, it gets the afternoon sun, if I can get up in here, it's a bit in the shade, the sun's a bit low still. I've got a lot of undersized cherries and uh, on this side of the tree, they were actually all like this. Um, now, throughout the tree, there was a smattering of undersized cherries. I'm trying to work out why that was, and I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, one explanation I've come up with is this tree seems to have a greater abundance of cherries coming from a closer location. And I'm wondering if they just can't get enough nutrition and goodness into the cherries um, and potentially it's the style of the cherry as well um, they don't grow as big and plump maybe as the Stella or the Star Crimson there's certainly um, you know these cherries here are good size um, but there's an awful lot more smaller cherries on the tree um, the other thing I'd say about these cherries just having uh, been eating them as I pick them um, is they've got a little bit of tartness to them compared to certainly the Star Crimson but and even the Stella so if you do like a little bit of tartness and uh, my partner actually I think liked these cherries last year um, and I'm getting used to them I, I actually um, I don't mind that little bit of tart flavor in the mouth it just adds another bit of complexity to the cherry uh, to the taste um, yeah maybe more suitable for making um, pies and things like that too maybe so um, yeah just another consideration if, if you're looking for a tree but um, originally I thought this tree had less cherries on than the Stella uh, actually bought up a smaller bowl thinking I didn't need a big bowl um, to pick it and just because of the sheer quantity that it has in each location and they were well hidden under leaves and so forth I misread this tree 
Um, so yeah, it's it's easily had as much, um, actually slightly more cherries on it than the um, the Stella, which which is different from last year. The Stella had slightly more last year, but they've both been relatively similar. Um, so how would I summarise this? Um, I think if you like a, a thinner skin cherry, a star crimson cherry, you're probably not going to get in the shops. They're going to spoil um, in transit, uh, in storage. Um, the commercial growers would probably find them a bit more um, painful. So I, I doubt you're going to find them in the shops. Um, so if you want something a little bit different from what you can get in the shops and in years where you get a good cherry growing season, you're going to get a more abundant crop, uh, or at least that's my experience. Um, Star Crimson is definitely a good choice. If you want something that's probably a little bit more robust and reliable, I think the Stella, for my money. Uh, with the thicker skins, um, they're probably going to keep a little bit better. Um, certainly on the tree they've kept a bit better. And um, I'd say they're a good choice. But if you like something a little bit tart, um, I've had a few splits on the Lappins, but um, nothing compared to the Stella. Um, really the issue here is more being one of um, size. So a lot of cherries that just didn't grow to full size. Um, but still I ended up with just as many uh, cherries as the Stella. So yeah, if you like a bit of tartness maybe in your cherry, Laffins, um, probably worth a go. Um, you can see here, this is where I prune the tree. So that's probably at about 160 centimetres high off the ground. Um, and you can see here, I've got about a metre, maybe 90 centimetres, maybe a metre to the tip of, um, of growth off of where I pruned it. And you can see where I've pruned it, um, the, the little buds at the end have shot off in three different directions. So um, you get a lot of growth on a cherry tree. If you want a big tree and you want more volume of cherries, obviously you could just let it grow a lot more, providing you're happy to be going up a ladder or, or train it out. I'm growing my trees reasonably close together, so um, with the view that maybe one day I'll cage them. So I'm not, um, I'm not doing, I'm not letting them grow large. Um, might be easy to see it on here actually. But the other thing I thought I'd just share with you is where the cherries grow. So if you're pruning a cherry tree, it's worth knowing where the cherries grow. And, um, not so obvious on this one. I might just pinch one of these other branches. You can see here these little stubs growing out of the out of the branch. And so this is what the cherry grows on. So I wouldn't want to prune below that. I'd want to tr prune above it because that's where I'm going to get the cherries. Um, so it's worth just knowing that these ones are obviously smaller and a bit hard to see because we've got the leaves on them, but um, there's little little stubs where these are growing from. So yeah, I hope you found that a little bit interesting. Um, that's the final tree tree video for the season. The nets are off, the cherries are picked or will be shortly, and um, nothing to do but to enjoy them now. Hope you found that interesting. Um, yeah, feel free to give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos on um, bees, uh, fruit trees, uh, vegetable garden, and what I'm growing around the outer east of Melbourne. Cheers for now.